gonna keep getting up every day. I, it's got to be worth it, mm. right? Yeah, I mean, I, if you've ever been in that situation before where you're not sure you want to live another day, uh, like it ain't worth it. Yeah, man. I mean, it's different. Greetings to you. This is Brother James Muhammad, a student in the ministry of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, a member of the Nation of Islam. It is my great privilege once again to come to you on these airways in Closing the Gap. This is the show, purpose for the activity to bring people together, to close the gaps, certainly in the black community that exists, not just to bridge them, but to close them and eradicate them, but ultimately to close the gaps that exist within the human family of the planet Earth. As you know, I always begin this show with expressions of gratitude. And we invoke the name of Allah that we might be successful. So in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the world, we thank Almighty God, Allah, for his merciful intervention in our affairs, in the person of the great Mahdi, Master Fard Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever, and we thank him for raising up from our midst his messenger, Messiah, the exalted Christ, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, through whom we have been given our beloved and blessed Redeemer, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It is to him that I am deeply grateful and highly honored that I might have something to say of a positive, truthful nature to our listening audience. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I wish to express my gratitude for the CEO of In Touch News, our dear brother, Daryl Johnson for extending to us this platform, this time, this forum to share with you some of the message of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And of course, all who are responsible for our being here and most importantly, all of you listeners and viewers, we thank you ever so much for your support, for your time, your attention, your ears, your eyes, and of course, your monetary support. We thank you so much. Last week, if you recall, we read an article from the Final Call newspaper, the uh, volume 38, number 42, dated July 23rd, 2019. This was last week's paper. And in this paper, the Final Call newspaper, we read an article dealing with our dear brother, student minister Stanley Muhammad, his wife, Sister Ruth Muhammad, their family, and the dilemma and trial that they are experiencing today. I'd like to recap some of that article with you and then move on. The theme of this week's show is Out of Trial, Triumph. And you'll realize why I themed this particular show like that as we move on. This is an article penned by our dear brother and staff writer, Brother Brian E. Muhammad of the Final Call newspaper. As the national debate rages about immigration reform, protection of U.S. borders, and treatment of refugee and asylum seekers from Mexico, Central and South America. One Georgia mother has been separated from her family. Her case is indicative of a harsh and broken immigration system that's killing and hurting many people, according to experts. Ruth Muhammad, 47 years old, was born in Mexico and brought to the U.S., when she was seven years old in the 1970s, but never documented. 
She was denied re-entry into the United States from Mexico in early May while attempting to gain a visa from the American consulate. Miss Muhammad has been married for nearly 30 years with nine children, seven grandchildren, and established a productive life in the United States, which she should have, which should have helped qualify her for citizenship. Actually, these are the words of student minister Stanley Muhammad of mosque number 15B in College Park, Georgia. Actually, our attorney said we were the perfect candidates for the visa. Everything looked optimistic for his wife's case, and Stanley Muhammad recalled his lawyer saying she had handled worse cases where visas were granted. We never thought, Stanley speaking again, we never thought in our wildest imagination there would be any kind of problems getting the visa. Ms. Muhammad started paperwork toward legalization in 1996 out of a desire to reunite with her father, who she was separated from after relatives left Mexico with her. The Muhammads eventually acquired a 1-130 status for citizens who petition on behalf of a relative for citizenship. The couple later obtained a 1-601A hardship waiver, which should have allowed for reentry into the United States. In May, the Muhammads were directed to the American consulate in Juarez, Mexico, to submit additional paperwork and complete the visa approval process. That's where things went sour. A U.S. consular officer denied the petition, citing missing vaccination shots and concern Ms. Muhammad would become a public charge or dependent on the federal government. The Muhammads contend her records show otherwise. The problem with this, with that is, my wife is not a public charge. These are the words of student minister Stanley Muhammad. This family I have known for almost 30 years. Student minister Stanley served here in the Nation of Islam for Mosque number 47 as its captain. When I was blessed to be the student minister here at that time. Since then, student minister Stanley, of course, moved to College Park, Georgia, established a wonderful and productive business, which I'm not going to say how much he made, but certainly it counters this false charge that Ms. Muhammad, Sister Ruth Muhammad, might become a public char charge. I have known this family for 30 years, and I can attest that because of the diligence, the sense of responsibility, the progressiveness, the intuitiveness, and the entrepreneurship of our dear brother Stanley Muhammad, our dear sister Ruth Muhammad did not work a day in her life. So all of those assertions and alleged valid, uh, valid reasons for refusal of the visa was absolutely false. Now certainly this is a trial for the family, Sister Ruth, the mother of little sister I, Akira, who recently suffered a traumatic, a, a traumatic brain injury as a result of a vehicular um, accident, and she is stressing over the absence of her mother. Since then, we have launched a campaign to get our sister back and to bring attention to the unjust nature of the acts of the United States Consulate. I want to read 
some information regarding the effort that we are putting forth, and we're going to ask you to join that effort after we read these instructions. For those of you who would like to join the discussion, you can join the discussion by calling 813-444-9588. Once again, that's 813-444-9588. And when you call in, I'd ask you to keep your um, comments and questions brief. That's the line that we leave open for calling participants. And if you want to view and listen to the show, it's streaming live at www.n-touchnews.com. That's www.n-touchnews.com. You can reach it on your computer, and you can also access it on Facebook Live under that same address. And so, dear family, we want to offer to you the chance to come to support for our dear brother and his family. Assalamu alaikum. Please find an edit of the so a suggested text to share with your friends, family, and supporters. Let's talk once you review. I want to give you some background of the case. Ruth Muhammad accompanied her husband Stanley, accompanying her husband Stanley, went to Ciudad Juarez on May 5, 2019, to be interviewed by the U.S. Consulate Immigration Service. In what should have been a routine interview for eligibility for a marital visa, her paperwork was accurate and complete. And from all signs, she met the five statutory requirements needed to be approved. Instead, Ruth has been denied eligibility based on vaccination requirements, which she has certified vaccination records and income her husband has provided for her and their shared children throughout their marriage of 30 years. The interviewing officer's primary goal is to assess the authenticity of the marriage and review supporting documents. If the application is considered as ineligible, the applicant is afforded the opportunity to provide additional documentation or evidence to support eligibility during the interview or immediately following. None of these offerings were presented to Sister Ruth. As a result, she has been deemed ineligible and unable to return to the U.S. until additional applications and waivers can be presented for review. She has complied with the submission of these additional applications and waivers, but at a very high cost, both emotionally and financially. Her application is not being reviewed in a timely manner, and her stay is exceeding the expected period, causing severe financial and emotional hardship and is threatening to permanently destabilize her family. Sister Ruth and Brother Stanley have a 10-year-old daughter who has suffered a traumatic brain injury and is dependent on her mother for 100% of her care, and Stanley's father has been diagnosed with advanced stage 4 cancer of the stomach and recently hospitalized with a dire pro prognosis. They need our help. The Honorable Congressman George John Lewis has been enlisted to submit a congressional inquiry to the USIC and Department of State referencing adherence to the guidelines of the interview process and the status of Sister Ruth's application. A recent determination from the Department of State's legal division deemed the process as following the correct procedure. 
Expert advice disagrees with this finding, and we are requesting that Congressman Lewis refute this determination with evidence provided to his office and request that the DOS legal division revisit their analysis in light of the evidence presented to them. In doing so, the original determination of ineligible ineligible should be rescinded and the interview process recovered. They need us to do the following. Now, I want everyone to take your pens out and paper and listen to what we are saying and what we are asking every concerned citizen to do. Call the congressman's office and request to speak with Ms. Tureri Butler, district director, and Mr. Michael Collins, chief of staff, Georgia. That's, and that's, that number is 404-659-0116. Once again, that's Ms. Tureri Butler, district director, and Mr. Michael Collins, chief of staff in Georgia. The number is 404-659-0116. Directions and text. Provide your name and organization affiliation, if any. Tell them that you are calling on behalf of Sister Ruth Muhammad, a.k.a. Ruth Dolores Corona Olivares Immigration Case CD J201 462 That's immigration case CD J201 462 And you want the congressman to refute the recent findings of the DOS legal analysts regarding the adherence to the interview process by the consular officer and the rights of the petitioner and push for the expedition of the application review. Also, express the need to expedite a request for humanitarian parole so that our dear sister Ruth and her husband can temporarily return home to secure their family while continuing to comply with the application review process. Then, we want you to call the Washington, D.C. office, number 202-225-3801, and ask to speak to Congressman John Lewis, Chief of Staff Michael Collins. Follow the directions and text above. Then call the U.S. Consulate Embassy in Juarez Council, General John Tavernier. 011-52-656-227-3000. Use the background information above stressing the need for humanitarian parole. Remember to remain respectful. Once you've done all of or most of the above, please send an email to Aisha Jeffries at gmail.com. That's A Y I S H A J E F F R I E S at gmail.com with a brief description of your experience, e.g., spoke to the suggested com- contacts and the results. If you are unable to speak to anyone, leave a message. If you have any questions, please email again Aisha Jeffries at gmail.com that's A-Y-I-S-H-A-J-E-F-F-R-I-E-S at gmail.com and I will respond A-S-A-P thank you so very much for your love and support of the Muhammad family please pray for their safe return sincerely Aisha Jeffries, Sissy. Now, I know that's a lot to take down, and I'm going to read it again before 
the show closes to make sure that you can record it. In the Holy Quran, we are taught that we as believers in Islam are tried at least once or twice every year. It is trial that purifies. For no one knows really the substance of themselves except that substance is put under trial and then we know the truth of ourselves. It's easy for us to profess a thing or to declare a thing or to act as if we represent something of a moral character, of a strong faith, etc., etc., but religion and faith is not what you profess or um, um, talk or speak. Faith and religion is what you practice. As James said in the Bible, faith without works is dead. And of course, Jesus exhorted us to, by saying, be ye not just hearers of the word, but be ye doers of the word. And this is, in fact, a heavy trial for our dear, beloved family. But as I before mentioned, the theme of this show is out of trial, triumph. Now, for those of you, once again, who want to join the discussion, you can call 813 444 Eight, eight. Once again, that's 813-444-9588. And if you want to view and listen to the show, you can go to www.n-touchnews.com. That's the website. Or you can use that same address to go on Facebook Live. Out of trial, triumph. Now, I shared with you the trial. Now I'd like to share with our listening audience the triumph. In the latest Final Call newspaper, and here it is with our beautiful Redeemer, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan on the cover, the headline is Message to President Trump, Part 1. In this latest Final Call newspaper, there is an article, again, penned by staff writer Brother Brian Muhammad, and it is titled Muslims' Act of Love in Mexico. You know, the enemy purposes his activity and his behavior to produce an evil act that will burden the righteous. But in the Holy Quran, we are taught the enemy plans and Allah plans, and certainly Allah God is the best planner. And so therefore, out of this trial, tremendous trial that Allah permitted our brother and his family to go through, there is triumph. Muslims act of love in Mexico. Let's read. Guadalajara gathering hears Minister Farrakhan's message. The Quran uh, reads, O you who believe, when it is said to you, make room in assemblies, make room. Allah will give you ample. That is from the Holy Quran, chapter 58, verse 11. The first message delivered at Mas Maryam, the nation of Islam's international headquarters in 2019 by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, was viewed live via webcast July 21st at a gathering in Guadalajara, Mexico. Now check this out. The meeting was organized by student minister Stanley Muhammad, 
Yes, the same student minister, Stanley Muhammad, whose family was unjustifiably and unjustly detained in Mexico. The meeting was organized by student minister Stanley Muhammad and his wife, Sister Ruth Muhammad of Muhammad Moss, number 15B in College Park, Georgia, and Brother Raphael X and his wife, Larisha X, who are both members of the Nation of Islam and reside in Mexico with their children. I, I want us to just let that, you know, just let that resonate. Here now, an unjust act purpose to bring about a burden on the righteous, particularly and specifically Brother Student Minister Stanley and Sister Ruth Muhammad, his wife and their family. But look at how Almighty God Allah brings triumph out of trial. Here now, for the first time, Guadalajara, Mexico, is now enjoying the word of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, along with all of us here in the States and throughout Europe and Africa. Guadalajara and its citizenship is listening to the universal truth of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad given by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Let me continue. I mean, I'm so overjoyed to be a witness to the hand of Allah working even in the enemy's plan to do evil out of his plan Allah extracts good let's continue the gathering was one of several outside of the borders of the United States and indicator of the global reach and influence of the nation of Islam what I seen to today in the people, these are Brother Stanley's words. No, these are Sister Ruth's words. What I seen today in the people, when you teach these teachings the way we're taught, there are no barriers, Ruth Muhammad told the final call from Mexico. The people accepted the teachings even though they are in another country speaking another language a different culture. Everybody accepted what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan had to say. Again, triumph out of trial. And on that note, I'm going to stop right there and just say for those of you who would like to accuse the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teaching as being hate teachings and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as being a hater or a bigot. I want you to listen to how we span the lines of ethnicity with the word of truth, the lines of race, the lines of culture with the truth of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad that knows no ethnic border, knows no racial border, knows no cultural border. Truth is truth and this is what the enemy does not want you to know this is why they excoriate and bombard the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan with lies and false accusations and charges they don't want you to know that the truth that the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan teaches is universal and for all and if he could teach that truth unhampered and unfettered. The world will be exposed to the truth of God, to the truth of the devil, to the truth of what is happening in the United States government and the governments of the world and in the synagogue of Satan. This does not mean that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is saying all members of the Jewish community are members of the synagogue of Satan? No, not at all. And whether you know it or not, even as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us that we are Muslims, he has also taught us that we are Jews and we are Christians. What do you mean, Brother James? How can you be all of that? 
Let me explain from the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad given to us by the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. A Muslim is one who submits his or her will to do the will of God. That's what a Muslim is. And therefore, what is a Christian? A Christian is one who is crystallized into a oneness with God by following the example of Christ. And what was and is his example? We can get what his example was from the oft-repeated prayer of the Christians. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Wait for it. Wait for it. Then he said, thy will be done. What are you saying, Jesus? Are you saying the will of the Father is the will we should be submitting to and not the will of ourselves? That's exactly what he is saying, and that's exactly what a Muslim is, one who submits his or her will to do the will of God. Well, Brother James, how do Jews fit into that? What is a Jew? A Jew, the scripture teaches us, is not known by the circumcision of the foreskin of the male organ. That does not determine a Jew. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us that a Jew is one who has entered into a sacred covenant relationship with God. And on that note, we got to go to commercial and we will be right back. You've been listening to Closing the Gap. Stay right there. We will be right back. This is Trina Johnson with Caldwell Banker Real Estate, the real estate agent you've been looking for. If you want top dollar for your home or you're looking to make a purchase, call me at 813-244-6953. Again, 813-244-6953 and let me list your home. Brothers and sisters, our listening audience, we are back with Closing the Gap, and we are dealing with the theme, Out of Trial, Triumph. This is to highlight and underscore the trial of our dear brother and fellow student in the ministry, Student Minister Stanley Muhammad, representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the city of College Park and Muhammad Mosque number 15B. For those of you who want to join the discussion, you can call 813-444-9588. Once again, that's 813-444-9588. And so let us continue with the reading. Again, out of trial, triumph. As the temperature, oh, I'm sorry, I'm here. I, I'm in another article. Hold on. Let's continue. Mrs. Muhammad said the gathering bore witness that 
big fields await the wide awake man to work out in and that the teachings of the nation of Islam are universal, not limited to one people or country. We can't have, she states, a fear to go to the world and teach those teachings because they are waiting for us. Mrs. Muhammad has been in Mexico since May after being denied re-entry into the U.S. while trying to obtain a visa. She was born in Mexico and brought to the U.S. when she was seven, but never documented. See Final Call, Volume 38, Number 42. The Muhammads are in a legal battle over the matter, however. Despite their personal plight, they became concerned about the condition of the Mexican people. Student Minister Stanley Muhammad said they knew Minister Farrakhan's message had to be available to Mexican people who he said were suffering from, from a spiritual and economic crisis. He states, and I quote, we don't ever try to put our personal struggles before the mission. We just don't have that spirit, and I don't think any true believer has that spirit. It's always the suffering of our people that takes precedence, he explained. He said, a true believer. And we have a call coming in. Caller, you're on Closing the Gap. Welcome. Yes, this is our brother, Minister Stanley Muhammad from Muhammad's Mark. All days. praises I due to Allah. Wa alaikum salam, dear brother. It's wonderful to hear your voice and to hear firsthand from you how everything is going with your family and what we can do and how we can help. Uh, give us an update, dear brother. I appreciate you calling in. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank Allah for you, Brother Stephen, to James, for being a long time. Uh, supporter and believer and a helper to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who I have known for well over 20 years. Yes. And your steadfastness, your love, and your commitment to our nation and to the Messenger of Allah is far excellent. And I want to thank you and give praise and thanks to Allah for not just you, but your wonderful wife, Sister Joanne, and your entire family, and the wonderful work that you're doing on the airwaves, sharing the life-giving teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, as taught by the Honorable Mrs. Farrakhan, is top priority, not just in the state of Florida, but all over the planet. I want to also thank you for highlighting the story on what's going on with my, my wife here in Mexico and our family. Um, my wife and I are actually in great spirits because whenever you do Allah's will, regardless of what the trial and circumstance you go through, mm. it is the anesthesia in the painful trial that you go through. And so it is our remembrance of Allah, keeping his duty in our consciousness, in our activity, that's blessing us to overcome the wiles of Satan. Yes, sir. So we are uh, here in Mexico because of some fallacious ineligibility. When my wife and I went down to Juarez, Mexico, to the U.S. consulate to get her visa, everything was in place, everything was uh, met the standards and the requirements of the U.S. government for my wife to get a visa. But as we know, America is not at war against terrorism, but America is, is at war against Islam. That's right. And of course, our name is Muhammad, and they do thorough background check of who you are social media, uh, and many other uh, avenues that they use to find out who this person is before they interview you. So they already determined to concoct a conspiracy to make my wife ineligible. 
Well, she went to her, her exam uh, there in Mexico as required at the clinic that is uh, authorized by the U.S. consulate. Their own panel physician examined my wife and gave her a document uh, saying that she met all the vaccination requirements. Of course, uh, for the few minutes, James, you know that I am a business owner. That's right. And by law's grade, uh, a homeowner and a son that is uh, from my father, who was a Vietnam veteran of the U.S. government. He worked in the Air Force for many years and and and, and, and left the Air Force with, with top rank as a staff sergeant and worked at Langley Air Force Base as a great administrator and over many uh, uh, soldiers in the Air Force Base, on the Air Force Base, pardon me. And uh, so I and my family have made great contributions to this country. And so the second uh, thing that I want everyone to know that I've been caring for my wife for over 30 years. That's right. And nine children, seven grandchildren born in the States, and we are not welfare recipients. We are well beyond the, above the poverty uh, limit there in uh, America. And so when she got to an interview, they made her ineligible on two charges, saying that she actually did not meet the vaccination requirements, although the clinic and their own panel physician says she did, and they signed off on it, and she has that documentation. And also they said that they was concerned about her being a welfare recipient, that I don't make enough money to care for my wife. So therefore, it revoked a document that we was awarded called an I-601A, which is a waiver for unlawful presence when my wife was unlawfully, or not unlawfully, but she was uh, brought to America against her will at the age of seven. And so um, they looked at that circumstance in the immigration process, and they determined that uh, well, that circumstance was forgiven under the I-601A, and they said if our, our family is separated, it would produce extreme hardship because we have a a 10-year-old disabled daughter that my wife is a 24-7 yes, yes. caretaker of, and so that I-601A was supposed to be like the security that my wife was not going to ever be separated from our family. But we did not know that the U.S. consulate was going to concoct this conspiracy and come up with this, these two fallacious ineligibilities, which actually revoked the I-601A, which prohibited my wife from entering back into the country. And so we had to go through this long process of my lawyer to uh, appeal it or to file a motion of reconsideration and file these waivers, which can take literally um, over a year to actually just get an approval or disapproval. So while we are doing that battling uh, with the U.S. consulate and uh, immigration, USCIS, to get you know this uh, fallacious and eligibility waived, we were not sitting idly by here in Mexico. We actually are believers, and we see the suffering of our people here in Mexico who are original people. They come from the native uh, Indians of That's the Western right. Hemisphere. That's right. And the most honored Elijah Muhammad taught us that Master Fahd Muhammad taught him a law in the person that when he appeared July 4th, 1930, there were 17 million original black men and women here in the hells of North America. And he said, with the 2 million Indians makes it 19 million with his harmony. So he included the Native Americans 
in the mental and spiritual resurrection process because they suffer too. And many of us have Native American in our blood. It was the Native Americans who helped Harriet Tubman through the Underground Railroad. It's the Native Americans who actually aided us in survival skills during slavery. We are the same family. The real Native Americans are black just like you and I, and they come from the East, and they are original people. So when I uh, and my wife came down here to Mexico, we see black brothers and sisters who are from that root, black brothers and sisters who derive from Africa, black yes. brothers and sisters who were enslaved from Africa and enslaved as a Native American who uh, inhabited this part of the planet uh, by the Spanish, by our open enemy. So we went to work knowing that this is the people whom Master Fahd Muhammad loves as well as the black man and woman. So when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that he's going to be speaking to the world on uh, this past Sunday, we quickly organized a meeting place. We uh, prepared food for our brothers and sisters, treated with them with supreme hospitality. We got a brother named Brother Raphael X and his sister, his wife, pardon me, Sister Larisha, and her children who reside here in Mexico, who are FOID MGT. They came over to Guadalajara, Mexico, to help us with the meeting. His brother Raphael X did the translation. He did a magnificent job translating the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and we had 24 first-timers and 22 accepted the life-giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Oh, praise and all throughout to the Allah. lecture. Yes, sir. Uh, praise be to Allah. They applauded uh, they, their mind and their heart and their eyes were glued to the screen, listening very attentively to every word that the honorable Mrs. Farrakhan spoke. And afterwards, we broke bread, and they were asking questions about Islam, and they just were so fired up and so grateful to Almighty God, Allah, for that day. So we determined that we are going to help in a mighty way to build a mosque here in Guadalajara, Mexico, Brother Sue, Mr. James. Yes, sir. We're on our way, and tomorrow we're going to have another meeting galvanizing those who have accepted to, to firmly root them in the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and start them in the orientation process. We have Brother Susan Mr. Abel helping us and assisting us uh, from Chicago. Our brother, who is a Mexican from uh, uh, Mexico, his, his family, his roots is here in Mexico. He speaks fluent Spanish, and so he's helping us in this whole process. So, Brother Susan Mr. James, it's a wonderful spirit down here. The people love the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We receive zero opposition, no opposition whatsoever. Mm. They believe that God is black. They believe that it's time for the original people to rise. They know they call the white man the gringo. They know that he is a major problem to their suffering here in Mexico. Mm. And they know that they have to go back to their roots, which is Almighty God, Allah to begin to solve the problem here in Mexico. So I thank you, Brother Sue and Mr. James, for allowing me to call in, to share what's on my heart and my spirit. And if you don't mind, my wife is right here, and she would love to give you all the greetings. Oh, we would Allah. love Somebody to hear here. from our dear sister, Ruth. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum salam, sir. Thank you so much, Brother Sue and Mr. James, for everything, for putting us out there. Uh, we appreciate it. We thank Allah for you and Sister Joanne and the family. We love y'all. And we we're love just you grateful. too. We're so grateful. And may Allah continue to bless you to do the work because we got a mighty work to do. That's right. You know, and, 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 and we can't stop until it's done. And That's that means right. that we can't stop until the hereafter is present. Until this world has been set down and, and God's kingdom is at hand. So That's, That's right. That's you know, we, we got a mighty work to do, and we got to just continue to do the work. 
All praise is due to Allah, my dear sister. Go ahead, Sister Ruth. We love Allah you, Allah. and we love Allah the family. Love All praise is due to Allah. Now, the, yes, we are literally overjoyed with your testimony, and, of course, the testimony of Student Minister Stanley Muhammad. It shows, it manifests, and reflects the true believer's heart that in a time of trial, in a time That's where right. others might be in sadness and bogged down and depressed. Here, this family takes on the responsibility of the mission of the resurrection of the dead, prioritizes that mission, and subordinates their trial. This is a magnificent testimony of true believers. And you are a magnificent example. You inspire us. And I could go on and on, Sister Ruth, as you know, <laughs> we can. But we want you, uh, either you or Student Minister Stanley, to share with us how we can help. You know, where how we can help. I want to share something that you brought to my mind when you said that. Mm. You know, we get all of these scriptures, right? Yes, ma'am. All of us. You know, we, we get... You know, the scriptures, we get all these prophets and all these messengers. Now, we read about them. So what is good for us to read about them if we don't believe it? That's right. So if the Hebrew boys were put in a fiery furnace, mm -hmm. okay, and we are to read about that, that, that what happened to them and what was their attitude, what's the purpose of us reading about these great men of God? If it's not for us to believe it and to apply it into our own life. That's right. And so when I read about the Hebrew boys, when I read about Daniel in the lion's den, and how because of the, 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 the trial that Daniel went through, because of his strong belief, he didn't give up on Allah, he didn't give up on the God, they put him in the lion's den, but Allah had them lions covered. Come on, Where sis. Daniel did not get bit, not scratched. That's right. He didn't go through nothing through his trial. But at the end, guess what? He, it, because of him going through the trial the way he did, he was able to turn the whole people of his country mm -hmm. to believe in the God. Yeah. Because ain't no way this man didn't get anybody's hungry lion. And he talking all this stuff. Go ahead. <laughs> and they sis. don't eat him up. You understand what I'm saying? His, his, he went through the trial, but in the trial, he was a testimony of the power of God. That's right. And that's what my husband and I, we read about these Go men. Ahead. We believe in these men. These ain't no story of the ancient. Ain't no story that uh, uh, Lila, uh, uh, what they call them, lullabies. Mm. This is reality, and this is something that we have to apply in our life, when we say we are Muslims, when we say we are Christians, when we say we are Jews, Go ahead, we have Sister to apply Ruth. what we say we that's believe right. in, that's that it's right. a reality. And that's our spirit is that our trial is that we want to make our trial be a testimony for the world to believe that there is no God but Allah in Muhammad. Come on, is sis. That's right. That's our spirit. And that is your work. Not only what you say, but it is evident in your practice. It's magnificent. And as I said, we are overjoyed at your testimony and your example that Allah has made you for the nation and for all praise believers. Allah. All praises due to Allah. But substantively, dear Sister Ruth and student minister Stanley, we want to make sure that everyone under the sound of our voice, knows how they can help this effort. So if you have that information, we were hoping uh, Brother Maurice would call in. I did read the instructions that were given so that we can follow up and help, but I want you to tell us how we can help, how we can help financially, which is exceedingly important. Yes, sir. Uh, it, you can do PayPal, and PayPal is S as in Stanley Muhammad, spelled out, and then it's at, at AYSAVP.com. That's PayPal. Mm -hmm. 
Is someone is someone on the line, Steve? Yeah, I think that might be Brother Maurice. Sister, uh, I'm going to put you on hold so Brother Maurice can come on and give some information. Okay, yes, sir. Love yes, you sir. all. Love you, too. Can Love you me. bring him in, Steve? Waalaikum. Waalaikum salam. You're on Closing the Gap. Yes, sir. So I'm going to come to the to give you the information. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please do. This is Brother Maurice. Yes, sir. Yes, go right ahead, right. man. Speak clearly All right. so that we can All hear right. you. Okay. So the project fairline PayPal information, can I be heard? Is that good? Excuse okay. Project fair, fair yes. Line, PayPal information is Project Fairline 2019 at gmail.com. Project Fairline 2019 at gmail.com. Select family and friends. Um, and then you can use Muhammad PayPal information as well. And that is Muhammad's Mosque 15 b at gmail.com. Select family and friends as well. And you can use the cash app uh, is dollar sign Muhammad Mosque without an S, Muhammad Mosque 15 b Cash app is Muhammad Mosque 15 b that's for Cash App. If you'd like to donate to Minister Stanley directly to his Cash App, dollar sign Stanley Muhammad 70. Cash App Stanley Muhammad 70. Um, if you want to, if you did not get, if you want some assistance with any of those donations, you can text 484 424 7229. 484 424 7229 or 682 559 3482. There's an email address you can also, um, if you send your uh, request or information to, is Fodger Prayer Line 2019 at gmail.com. Fodger Prayer Line 2019 at gmail.com. If you'd like to send your regular mail, you can send it to Attention Student Minister Stanley Muhammad, P.O. Box 205, Red Oak, Georgia 30272. Attention Student Minister Stanley Muhammad, P.O. Box 205, Red Oak, Georgia, 30272. Again, that number is, if you uh, want further instructions or assistance, you can dial 484-424-7229 or text that number. Give us that number again, Brother Maurice. Sure, 484-424-7229. 484-424-7229. You can text or call that number. For any assistance for any of those apps. Excellent. Yes, sir. Now, I have Brother Student Minister Stanley and Sister Ruth on the other line, so uh, we're about uh, to close. I'm going to try to switch back over to them. Thank you for calling yes. in, dear brother. You're May Thank Allah you continue to bless you. Me. Yes, sir. Thank Can, you. Are they well. still on the line? Well, okay. Can you switch over to them? Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Sister Ruth, Brother Stanley, are you still there? All praises due to Allah. We, Since Brother uh, Maurice had all of the information listed and in order, we wanted to make sure every, all of the avenues by which we could help was given to our listening and viewing audience, and he did an excellent job in doing so. And so uh, I want to thank you once again, dear brother. I want to thank you, my dear sister. Um, we love you so much. I know the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is well pleased with your great work, your sacrifice, your focus on the mission. And if he is pleased, Allah is pleased. Praise be to Allah. Praise be thank to you Allah. Thank you, again, Brother Stuart Minister James, for inviting us to your wonderful talk show. May Allah continue to bless you in your ministry and thank all your listening audience for lending us your ear and may Allah continue to bless you all as I greet you in peace. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum salam. Now, as we are going, uh, uh, we're rushing really to the close of the show, I want to give some information as it relates to the show. For those of you who would like to support this show, Closing the Gap, you can go to PayPal 
at jkingdom1 at aol.com. That's jkingdom1 at aol.com. You can also go, again, in PayPal, region7helper.jm at gmail.com. That's region7, the number 7, helper at gmail. Uh, jm at gmail.com. Uh, you can also use Cash App. That is the dollar sign JM7 Region. Once again, that's the dollar sign JM7 Region. I want to thank all of you who support this cause, this effort. I want to thank those of you who support the show and listen and call in. And until next week, we're going to keep up this effort. Until our dear sister is rejoined with her family in the United States. We're not letting up. We're not slowing up. We're bringing her home. All praises due to Allah. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>